Hello everybody and welcome to Longer and Harder, the show on the internet where we take a subject and we go deeper and where my camera's way too high. Let's let's lower that just there we go. Much better. Hello everybody. I hope you all are having yourselves a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Hello, Micro Sina and A's here. I saw Factor's here. Team Skeptic, hey buddy, I haven't seen you in a bit. Um WF6I, how are you? How is everybody? Oh my goodness, so many people. Deathpool Wilson, NGO, and Viral Spark. I do love that. Um, you made a you made a funny comment a little bit ago about a flat Earth movie, Snakes on a Plane. Which I there we go, flat Earth movie names, Snakes on a Plane. Love it. I think that's great. Um, we should have one of those as well. Hello, One Toad. Hello, Luke. How are you today? Um, Luke, I sent you a, a message. I was wondering if you you made that really cool fan art of um that you sent me. Can I put that in the folder for fan art today? That would be awesome. I have it like downloaded and as soon as I get a yes or a no from you, I'd like to put it on here and show it to everybody because I think it's really cool. Um, so let me know. Um, how is everybody doing? I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful week um, this last week um, uh, and whatnot. So yes, I can put it in there. Mexican, I'm eating a burrito right now. Ooh, ooh that sounds tasty. Um, um, I'm getting a little peckish, so so the more we talk about food, the the better. <laughs> um, actually, speaking of Mexican, um, completely off the rails already. Uh, my wife has a really good idea, and I think we're gonna do this this year for uh, Christmas gifts. Is I'm gonna make a crap ton of salsa, um, like green salsa. Uh, so I gotta go. I think shopping probably today. Um, go out to the Mexican store and buy a bunch of tomatillos and jalapenos and uh, make a whole bunch of salsa, uh, like two or three batches worth of salsa and give it away as gifts. I think it's gonna be great. Uh, drank my first Mexican mule last night. Ever had once in a Mexican mule? I'm not much for mules. Like I don't, um, I don't, I, I, I don't think I like mules. I don't, the, the ones that are usually, like the only thing I know about mules is that they're served in like uh, copper glasses or copper, not glass I suppose, but you know, copper cups, right? Um, but what's in the, what's in it? It sounds interesting. Um, I had a Mexican food on Thursday, and the same night, three ladies got stabbed. Coincidence? Yep. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, a Mexican mule. Tequila instead of vodka? What's in a regular mule? I don't know what's in a regular... Like a Moscow mule? That's... Hmm. Yes? Oh, Moscow Mule is nasty and uses vodka. Mexican Mule replaces vodka with tequila. Oh, that's good. Okay. So what's what's okay now 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 I have to ask and and I might ask handy dandy uh handy dandy Google just to trigger all the Googles out there in the world. Um, hey Google, what's in a Moscow Mule? And we'll find out what's in a Moscow Mule together. Vodka, ginger beer, and lime. Huh. I'm not sure. Like my, my, I know my wife is a fan of them, and we would have like a copper mug mug up up in the bookcases because she's a like she likes those. I'm not, I'm not much for ginger, so I have to give the next time the next time I go to my my favorite uh, bar, I'll try to get myself a uh, a Mexican meal with uh, with tequila instead. Sounds interesting. I did. Speaking of which, though, and I and I, I did this on Friday, and I didn't get around to to try it, so I'm gonna have to go back. There's a there's a really cool entirely being derailed today there's a really cool uh ramen shop in omaha called eco ramen which is fucking amazing best best like ramen ever not that i like their ramen though because i actually order something if i they, they have a dumburi which is like a rice bowl which is really good um but they have a lot of really good food that's besides the point went there and then we hung out in that area and there's a place called uh burrito envy and they had a tequila bar and they had way too many tequilas and i did not even I didn't even know where to start on that one. Um, 
Like, I, I don't drink enough tequilas to, to, like, know they had, like, you could get flights, and I didn't, I was already a little bit, like, I'd already had a couple of drinks, so I didn't want to want to push it on, on having too many more drinks. Uh, but I think I'm going to have to go back there and just try their tequilas and see see what they're like. But they had a, just a bunch of tequilas, so one of these days I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go do that. I think it'll be great. Um, um, probably after after the New Year's, and then I have a scotch tasting to do after the New Year's. I have a lot of tasting to, to do. I don't like tequila, but Mexican Mule might be my new favorite drink. Okay, cool. Um, that sounds good. I'm gonna I'm, I might might have to do that. Whiskey guy, good. Um, I usually do scotches and whiskeys. Um, like I said I'm doing I'm doing a scotch tasting. There's a place here called the Scottish Rite in Omaha, and they do a a really fancy scotch tasting every year. Um, and it's like fifty dollars a person, and you get like I don't know, seven ish, eight ish, uh, scotches to taste, and they're they're really good. Um, they're they're damn good. It's really good. Uh, hard to beat a well-made margarita. It's true, margaritas are good. Um, but margaritas are a little too sweet for me. I'm always I'm, I'm just a little too sweet for me. Well, probably because I buy cheap margaritas, right? If I bought, I, I bet if I got like a like a nice margarita, it would be, wouldn't be so bad. Um, all right, so. With all of that alcohol talk, I want to get to my beer. So um, I'm going to move things along so that I get to my beer um, here pretty quick. But we do have housekeeping um, to do real real quick, real, real quick housekeeping to do. Um, I'm going to try to keep it short. We have um, next week will be the last show of the year. Um, it's going to be, I'm going to call it a season finale for, for longer and harder. Um, and then we will we will start again come the new year. But it'll be a season finale for 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 it. And then I'm going to try to rearrange my channel into seasons because I am into the point of, of this channel where there's a lot of shows. So there's going to be a season finale. I don't know if it's going to be anything special. It might just be this. I don't I don't, know. I don't have plans. Um, but we'll see. So so we'll have a season finale next next week. And then um, and then I'm going to be gone for a while. Um, I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to be going to Mexico to visit my family. So uh, I'm going to be gone not just out of off of YouTube. I'm going to be gone off the internet probably for a little while. Um, there's I don't like I use I there's really no like there is internet, but I don't necessarily have access to internet as as easily or as readily as I do in the states because I can't really use my phone without being charged a whole lot. So. So we won't be doing that. So whenever I get Wi-Fi, we might do that. Uh, were you in? Were you in a college fraternity? I was. I am a frat boy. I was a um, uh, Phi Kappa Psi uh, was my fraternity in college. Um, so I have one of their pins somewhere. Um, but yes, I was. I was in a college fraternity. Um, a dorky one at that. Like, I know I don't look like much of a frat guy because because I wasn't in one of those frats. But yeah. <laughs> I am a frat guy. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my frat in a little bit. but uh, So, yes, uh, next week's season finale. After that, going to be gone for a couple of weeks. Um, there will hopefully be videos while I am gone. So videos shouldn't stop, but there will be no longer and harder. There will probably be very minimal activity on the Twitters and the Discords and the everything else because I'm, I'm going to be gone. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's uh, housekeeping for, for now. Um, working on videos i promise that i'm working on videos i did finish editing the audio and started working on the animation for the next ube video um so eh, i'll get it <laughs> um so so uh college fraternity yes so i was uh i was a sigma lambda beta all latinos but me ah sigma lambda uh, did we have one of those no we had sigma chi we had uh phi's Phi Kappa Psi, which was I was in, and then we had Teak, which is a, a Theta Epsilon Kappa. There we go. Yeah, um, and it just looks like Teak. So those were the those were the three frats in my college. Uh, my frat, everywhere else in the world, they are horrible people. Uh, like no joke, they uh, there there used to be a chapter of it here in Omaha at UNO, um, and they got they got they got uh, disbanded because of you know um, hazing and sexual abuse allegations and you know the things that fraternities usually get uh, get uh, disbanded for um, and so they're kind of horrible in most places uh, except for the one that I'm in in Wisconsin which was just a bunch of dorks uh, so everyone else is like a bunch of football players and the usual like fraternity stuff like just you know the the athletes and whatnots and mine were the people who sat around and played like Dungeons and Dragons and uh, played video games all the time. We were the dorky ones, so that's why I was in it. <laughs> I'm in Omaha, too. Do lunch? Oh, hello. Uh, Simas Omaha. Hello. How are you? 
I are you from Omaha? I, yeah, that's I that's where I that's where we are currently, and that's where I live. So cool. I'll do lunch. Um, not for a while. Um, uh, if you're subscribed, follow me on Twitter if you have a Twitters, or go on the Discord, and then we can DM and whatnot. Um, I am always willing to meet people. Um, I know that uh, there's a couple people who've been like, hey, I stopped by Omaha and once in a while, I'll meet up. So, so yeah, I not for a while though. I'm I'm currently very very busy, and I have a lot of like other people that I have to meet for lunch <laughs> around the holidays. So not 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 anytime soon, but definitely definitely will. Um. Uh, uh, no, that's cool, man. No, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, I always love to meet up. I always love to meet new people. I think it's, I think it's great. But that's so cool that you're in Omaha. Um, as I always talk about Omaha stuff around here. So, uh, yes, that's it for housekeeping and, um, whatnots. I think, yes, yes, yes it is. So, we can move right into beer of the week. Um, I'm always willing to eat people. <laughs> Beer of the week. We found ourselves. I found another Avery beer um at the grocery store, which I thought was great. Um, um, Avery was uh beers that I got to try out when I went to Denver, and I brought one of them back. I think it was like the 27, 25. It was something like that. It was called something like that. It was super pretentious and delicious and wonderful. Um, I am pretty sure that I already tried this beer when I was at the brewery, but I wanted to share it anyway because it's. I, if I remember right, it's good. Um. What the hell is that can? It is a weird can. Uh, eat people. I know. We don't. We we slur our words. I slur our words. I slur our words when I'm sober. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stick with that sentence. Um, let alone when I drink. So I am. I am terrible. I did watch. God, I watched. I I hadn't realized. So so last week's beer like entirely kicked my ass. Um, and I was watching through last year or last week's uh, longer and harder, and I realized how much I slur my words. Like, come the end of that that episode, like, woo, woo, I was a mess. Uh, woo, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to hold it hold it off on those bigger beers sometimes. Cause, but that was like a thirteen point something alcohol beer. I was I did not I did not handle that beer well. Um, this one's less alcohol. Um, as far as I know, it's also delicious. Um, it is called Out of Mind Coffee Stout. Uh, it's by Ever Avery Brewing Company in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, if you live anywhere near the Boulder area, if you live in Denver, Boulder, um, Estes Park, anywhere in that area, I highly, highly recommend this brewing company. Uh, the brewery itself. There wasn't a single thing in that brewery that I didn't like. It was it was so good. Even their, their food is really good, too. So... Highly, highly recommended. If you are a beer person um, and you live in that area, go, go check out Avery. It is super, super good. All of their stuff, super great. Um, so this is this is one of theirs. It is a coffee stout. It is brewed with, and they give us the ingredients here, Geo. Um, brewed with Rocky Mountain water, malted barley, coffee, hops, and yeast. Um, even the rat, even the rat. Filter of the brewery was nice. Yes, it even was. I'm not a beer person. I'm a meat person. <laughs> uh, I think at this point I am mostly made out of beer. <laughs> like, you know how you're supposed to be made up of, like, whatever, 80% water? I think most of mine is, is alcohol and or beer based. <laughs> Hello. How is it going, Richard? I did see your message, Richard. I'll get back to you as soon as things done. I, I got your message and then I had to go grocery shopping, but I did see your message. So I'll get back to you in a bit. Um, okay. So we have, um, is it any good? It is super dark. I, I love, I love beers like this. Look at the, look at, look at how beautifully dark that beer is. Like that is an amazing, amazingly dark beer. I, I, oh, oh it's so good. Water, barley, wheat, hops, and yeast. It's not a beer. I know. We make beer. We make complex beers. Not... Wait, okay. So, so what are the rules for... What are the rules for German beers? It's like wheat. Do you do malt? Is it wheat and hops? Or is it just... Like, what do you... Is it just wheat? Is it just, just wheat and water? Is that all you do? Um, so, all right. Here we go. That is really good. Um, definitely not as good as last week's beer, which is a shame. I think I think I had my 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 hopes up a little bit higher, but it's still really good. Um, hi, and we have we have our we have our always wonderful wonderful guy here. Uh, ye yeast, water, barley, wheat, and hops. Okay, I might have a beer for you next week. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. Um, I have Hobbs is here, so I'm gonna try get get him just to lie down so we can move the camera. We can all hang out with Hobbs today. Hi, buddy. Are you having fun? Mm. We have a very good beer. Um, 
um, doesn't taste as much like coffee as I wanted it to. There's a there's a really great brewery here uh, called Script Town, and they have a coffee stout that smells like freshly brewed coffee, and it tastes like freshly brewed coffee with just a little bit of alcohol, and that's amazing. Um, so this one doesn't quite have that level of awesomeness. Buddy, make up your mind. Well, how are you going to sit? You going to sit down? You should sit down. Sit down, buddy. Yeah, everyone wants to see you. Here, look at everyone. You can say hi to everybody. There you go. Good boy. Um, so, um, we'll, ha we'll have the crotch cam here, here in a little bit once once Hobbs decides to sit down. Um, so, I've had coffee or beers. Um, uh, the Script Town, like I said, has uh, has a coffee or beer. But this isn't bad. Uh, beer scale, probably like a seven. It's it's nowhere near as good as, as the other I, I, uh, Avery stuff, like the... the um, um, the beer that I had right after I came back, and it's not as good as other things, but it's still not bad. It's still not bad. All right, Hobbsy, make up your mind, my friend. Make up your mind. Um, Hobbs needs a bath. He doesn't need a bath, do you, buddy? No, you're a clean kitty. Um, all right, so that's 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 more or less it. It's, it's good. I think I think it'll be a good beer this this week. Um, next we have ourselves. Have you tried Cafefe beer? Oh, that sounds like a uh, I like Hellas. There's a really good Hellas uh, beer out here. Um, uh, there's a brewery called Cross Train that's actually very close to where I live. Um, um, and I, they have they have a good one. They have they have um, they actually have like a jalapeno or a habanero Hellas, which is my wife just loves. Um, so they have some good things. Um, we'll have to we'll have to find some. I'll have to try to find some more beers. Uh, like the Scarlet Letter. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, um, I bought the... God, I've had this thing forever. Um, I have this and a bunch of stickers. I'm not sure. Um, there was a... I'm not... The story time while, while you, all, you, you all read the, the, the list of videos. Um, back, uh, I, like, one or two years ago, I needed to get, like, a, a new chain on my motorcycle. And I had a, I had a sticker from the, the local humanist society here in Omaha that uh, said something along the lines of uh, don't believe in God, join the club. Um, and it was to promote the, the humanist society. Um, and I, and I, had, I had that on my motorcycle, on, the, on my motorcycle tank, the, the, the gas tank. And so I took it to the local, my, um, the guys who work on my bike to get a new chain on it. And they, one of the, one of the, um, one of the mechanics refused to actually work on my bike. Uh, outright refused. Had said he wouldn't touch my bike because of that sticker. Um, and so I had I, I I had to take the sticker off, and I never put one on again. But I had to take the sticker off just so that I could get my chain on there. It was real dumb. I probably only because they're like the only people in town that work on that can work on my bike that I do it. And I and I kind of wanted my bike back really soon. It was near spring, but he he will he just refused. He absolutely refused to do it and wouldn't work on my bike as long as that sticker was on there. Um, yeah, he was super superstitious, and it was it was very magical. Um, it is funny. I was raised AC, so just feel un uh, unremarkable like having <laughs> arms. I know when you grew up with it, it's um, um, why is the can opener talking to himself, Hobbs? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I I got the pin entirely because um, I when I when I sort of realized I was an atheist, I was in Wisconsin and in a very religious part of um wisconsin is a very religious part of the country um especially where i where i where i was at and um i i felt the need to like let people know that i was an atheist so i wore i wore the pin to work i'd wore it everywhere and people would ask me hey why do you have that a um uh, and so i'd have to explain it which i i like i like talking to people about religion and stuff so so i like the ability to get like a that's that first step in to be able to have that conversation about why I had the pin. And so, so that's one of the reasons I have it and I still have it. And I, I still wear it every once in a while just to, just to get people talking about why, I, why I have it. Um, I have an identical cat. Uh, Skittles is his name. Oh, little good kitty. He's a good kitty. He's very happy to be here. Oh buddy. He's been, he's been really needy this weekend. I don't know why he's been so needy. Um, just the neediest little kitty, huh buddy? Um, okay, so with all the stories out of the way and with uh, the camera set up on the, the cute part of the show, uh, we have ourselves our video menu for today, um, which also, also I guess I should have said this in housekeeping, but it's probably more appropriate here. Um, come, I think, and, and I'll let you all tell me what you want to do. I think that after the season finale next week, 
Um, I'm going to clear out this video menu and then start with a fresh one once we get back um, in the next season or whatever. Uh, mostly because some of these have been on here for, for quite a while, um, which is fine. They can hang around as much as they want. But I kind of want to get like a whole fresh new list and then go from there. So um, soup and sandwich. Ooh, um, very cool. So video options for today is we have Not Cloning by Jonathan Miller, Veganism Almost Killed Me by Daphne Brilloli, Country Roll Full SJW by The Yellow Flash, um, Gravitational Genius by UAP, Flat Earth Warning by World History Official, uh, Flat Earth International Conference 2018 by Marty Leeds, and Science That Isn't Science by Quantum Eraser. Um, I am honestly hoping you pick the Quantum Eraser one because because I do love that one. Hey, Jared. How's it going? Uh, and anyone else who I missed, and I didn't quite say. I, I think the, I think both Jared showed up. So And Sean. Hello, Sean. Um, yeah. Quantum Eraser is, is, is just the best. He's just the best. Um, so this is, uh, this is another one of, in case you don't know, Quantum Eraser doesn't actually make videos. Um, but he did do a whole series of presents presentations on uh Cathexis's channel um uh there is only one jared <laughs> uh on Cathexis's channel about scientism science and scientism um and i've done i think uh two videos on quantum erasers on, on those presentations and i think i did like two or three videos on quantum erasers so this is one that i i haven't watched um i'm Quantum Eraser has like a list of, of fields, scientific fields that he considers are science and those that he doesn't. Um, I'll let you take a guess at what kinds of uh, what kinds of things he thinks are science and what kinds of things aren't science. Um, it mostly has to do with the things that contradict the flat earth. They, they, are, they are not science and the things that don't contradict flat earth. Those are science. More or less basically what it is. So I am I am sure that this presentation will be full of wonderful wonderful information on that uh and let's check ourselves the poll hi buddy i'm sorry i know i know you don't like it when i reach over like that but we gotta check the results we gotta check the results my friend uh we got number four winning with one vote over seven Ooh, ooh, gravitational geniuses is winning with one vote over seven so we might i'm gonna leave it up just a little bit long because that's super close um if people really want want gravitational genius, I'm fine. So, uh, Jared, you got You got I, I I think I can do one vote. So I will do your one vote for you, Jared. Um, uh, for for seven because you keep pressing seven, but you got to go to the link and do it. Uh, whichever one you got you got to do that unless you're actually voting there. <laughs> um, no, no, no. You got to say it right. Disinformation, flatter to toss that term around. It's true. It's true. Oh my goodness, guys, guys, can I change my vote? Unfortunately, you can't. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really, I really wish uh, you're encouraging others. Okay. I really wish that I could, like, um, I don't know. Like, I could do a chat vote. Um, but I, I, I don't, Nightbox, Nightbot can't do that. Nightbot, if I, if I do a poll through Nightbot, it just creates a, a straw poll anyway. So. Um, it would be, it would be nice. Um, it would be nice to vote for the winner. Vote for seven. Seven is, uh, honestly, it's what I would like to do because I haven't talked about Quantum Eraser in forever. They are tied now. Uh, I haven't talked about Quantum Eraser in a very long time. And, uh, I find him to be super hilarious. Um, he is just, he is just the funniest guy. I think he, uh, like a year or so ago, he found me, he found my comment. I left a comment on, um... One of Professor Stick's videos, and he found me on there, and he's like, he said something along the lines of like, "Hey, um, why don't you have me? Why don't you have me on your show to talk about whatever, something like that?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, why not? Come, come, you know, come on the show. Come on." I was starting to do longer and harder. It's like, come on the show, do it every week. We'll we'll do the thing. Um, and then. Um, so, so I, I was like, yeah, open to it. And then the moment, the moment that I said, yes, let's do it. He's like entirely started backpedaling on it. He's like, well, I mean, I don't, I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I, here's somebody who I think would be great as a moderator. I think I offered like Sean Hufford and uh, like Geo Strepper as like moderators. Like I know these two guys, I think they'd be nice and fair moderators. Um, and then he's like, well, how many, um, how many uh, PhDs do you have? And I was like, I don't, I don't have any PhDs. He's like, how many do you have? 
and and this this was easily the funniest thing he's ever said to me. He's like, um, uh, I don't I don't have any, but I could easily test out of at least five, um, because I think, I I think, the quantum eraser thinks that you can take a test for a PhD. I, I genuinely think that that's how he thinks PhD works, um, which is just just all the things. Oh, speaking of Professor Stick, I have to thank him for pushing uh, Trigger Tits, uh, Southern Dipshit, into the lead for Dumb Fuck of the Year. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, I haven't actually looked at Dumb Fuck. I didn't vote this, or I haven't voted this year. Uh, I haven't come to Corner He was a young. Uh, he was young. Someone he trusted urged him away from science. Uh, he took. Uh, he took it too far. He's he's just the worst. Yeah, test out of PhDs is just like because you know P, you you give away PhDs like you do like you give away fucking um, uh, GEDs. Oh oh ooh ooh, it's still contentious on this one. I don't. I'm not sure I want to call it quite yet because we got we got um, neck to neck votes on um, on both um, uh, quantum eraser and gravitational geniuses. So. We're kind of we're kind of tied there, guys. Not tied, but it's very close, very close. Um, also, I like talking shit about it. Uh, Red called me last night to give me the news. It made my night. Oh, that's good. Uh, hello, um, Undoom. How are you? Um, what is your kit licking? Hopefully himself. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, I invoke my second vote. Cat is probably licking boss. He's a, yeah. He's a cool boy. You a good boy. You a good boy. Um. You haven't seen him. You haven't been here in a while, buddy. Um, so I'm gonna give this like a minute or two, and then we're gonna we're, we're gonna move on and see what we do. Um, <laughs> so how's um, ah Undoom voted, and that I mean that's obviously the most important vote, right? Um, oh, oh yeah, and Undoom votes. I think Undoom vote made it. We're gonna we're gonna go with uh, Quantum Eraser um, with his. Um, he's got aww. We said quantum eraser, and, All right, and good Hobbs evening. is gonna have none of that nonsense. Like that is that is exactly what just happened there. Hobbs is gonna not. He's not gonna deal with quantum eraser. He knows better. Um, he does know better. Um, he knows better than I do, obviously, because I'm I'm about to do this nonsense. Uh, so this the whole name of the video is called. If I can if I can pull it up here, there it is. Um, and let's get it going on the screen too, I suppose, right? Like that's kind of the point. Gotta get it up here. Uh, bam. Um, and in case you haven't ever, if you, if you've been lucky enough to have hung around the internets and not have bumped into uh, Quantum Eraser, uh, he's very full of himself. I think somebody, I think Micro called, uh, uh, brought out the the term Dunny Dunning Kruger for him. Um, yeah. No, that is, um, he is very, very full of himself. He's very, um, he, th he thinks he knows far more than the, than the scientists that he's criticizing. Um, and he doesn't, he very clearly has no idea what the hell he's talking about. Um, he's also, like I said earlier, he, he, he won't, he won't debate anyone on, unless you have, um, like a PhD, even though he has done and ha I don't even know what his level of education is. Um, and he also, uh, his comments, like he's got somewhere, I'm assuming on his computer, he's got a list of like common comments and he just copies and pastes his answers in and it's hilarious. Cause so you, you get like every time you interact with him, you get the exact same answer. It's, it's hilarious. Mr. Grading voice to sell. So that's who he, who he is. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I, I can't really, I can't give him too hard of a time for a grading voice. Um, I'm not sure if you heard mine. <laughs> um, uh, Quantum Eraser talks about chemistry. I'll go into Rampage. I've never... I don't think I've heard him talk about chemistry before. He might in this video. Um, he's talked about flat... He's, so so one his very first video... that in the, the, Like the very first video in this series and the very first video that I tackled of Quantum Eraser is like uh, about what defines science. And he's got this really... He's got a really funny idea of what defines science. Uh, for him... It must have an independent variable, and and he defines an independent variable as the variable that you manipulate. Like that's his definition. So if you cannot, like if, if the the experimenter cannot physically manipulate the independent variable, 
then it's not science. So any any kind of science that um, involves like distance or time uh, can't be real science because you can't manipulate distance or time. Like he, he's it's super odd, um, and he does it entirely so that he can dismiss like um, uh, at the astrophysics astrophysics and it's. It's the silliest shit, and I'm sure it'll come up um, because I can already see. I, I can already see it on the presentation that it says independent variable in there. So I'm, I'm sure we will get into this talk about independent variable here pretty, pretty soon. Oh God, uh, he debated me when I was still a Glover. Uh, when I was a Glover, I have no PhD in anything. I, I. I don't, he, he started having, I think he started having that rule because people, like, I have, there is somewhere on the internet, um, you probably will struggle to, to find it, but there is somewhere on the internet, uh, a video or, or a hangout with me, Cara Deanne, um, Gem Panda, and Quantum Eraser, um, uh, uh, I think, I think it's in, um, I don't even remember what channel it was on, but it did happen. Uh, I don't, I'm going to try to, maybe, maybe I'll try to find that video, but there is, um, there is a, um, a de debate between the, th the three of us versus Quantum Eraser, and it is the silliest shit in the world. Um, so I will try to find it and maybe get it out here, but that, that does exist. Um, he really got, he really got his ass handed to him by three people. It was, it was great. It was great. Um, I don't think, it, I don't think it was FED, um, it was that it was that one channel, and I'm not even sure if it, if it's up that um, uh, Cordis was on all the time. Uh, G, it was a Glo Globe Earth debate. Earth debates was it ED? Was it Earth debates? I haven't been on it in forever, so I don't remember. But I'll, I'll try to find it. I'll try Earth discussions. I think it might have been Earth discussions. I think it might have been ED. Um, and there is like it's like a year old, probably more than a year old, um, but it does exist. It does 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 exist. Okay, so um, with that said, let's go into um, whatever. What, what do we have here? Um, so uh, the name of the episode is science, or the name of the video is science versus scientism, episode twelve: science that isn't science. Uh, this is uh, can be found on Cathexis's channel, and I will link below. Um, and this is Quantum Eraser giving his, um, his, uh, wonderful presentations, which I'm already going to give him a hard time. All of his presentations look like spam emails, um, because he's written them in his spam, in his email using spam email typography. It's great. Typography, not topography. Typography. Mm. Okay. So what do we got to say? Everyone, welcome tonight. This is Cathexis and... Once again, I've got Quantum Racer here. We're going to be covering just a, a couple little basics of some things that we were... Uh, uh, well, actually, John's gone over a little bit before, but he wants to make some clarifications and such. And so it'll be kind of a miscellaneous show of sorts. Um, how are you doing tonight, John? So so in case you don't know, uh, Quantum Racer's name is John. Um, um, he, might, he might even reveal his f full name because he shows his screen. Um, not that it matters. Um, uh, what was Earth, Earth Discussion was, um, a channel, it is dead now, I think, I don't, I don't, I don't think anyone's on there anymore, but, um, they do look like ransom letters, that's true, um, wait, that was the presentation, the presentation is, is ridiculous, it, it really is, um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, John Stunja, is that, is that his real name? I don't know, um, I think he's, I don't, I don't think he's, like, hidden his name, so I don't think I'm, I'm doxing him. Maybe I am. Um, but his real name is John. Um, we lovingly call him uh, Independent Variable John because you will probably notice soon it's Independent Variable. Um, one of the things that I always like to point out, it, 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 because I find this hilarious. So um, because he shares his whole screen, which John, John, when you do this, we can we can see what kind of uh, what kind of websites you like to visit. So what kind of websites does John like to visit? I'm going to have to get close to my screen to see most of these, but one of them, and this is probably my favorite, is that creation.com, so cre uh, uh, creation international, um, 
is is Creation Ministries International is one of his uh, websites. Um, in case you don't know, that was um, uh, Answers in Genesis in used to be Creation.com, and then they split off, and now there's like the American branch, which is I think Answers in Genesis, and the Australian branch. I want to say which is Creation Ministries International. Um, so that's one of one of the one of the sites that he regularly visits. Um, it, I will say it is a hilarious site to regularly visit. So. Um, if you ever want a good, good, good giggle, go to creation.com. It's, it's, it's got, it's got, it's got the best stuff. Mm. Uh, it does, he does have faith versus science. That's also on there. And, um, I just, I think it's great. I think it's great. Um, all right. With that said. Very well, sir. Thank you. Excellent. But, um, I guess, you know, let's just get this going. Uh, we'll jump right into the presentation and then we're going to have a, a brief little conversation about, what I like to call alternative cosmology afterwards. So <laughs> go ahead and uh, go for it, John. I've also had, I, and I'm going to try to find these videos because I think they're great. Um, I've also had a little little mini debate with Cathexis as well um, on ED. I'm pretty sure that one was also on ED. Uh, I don't have my bookmarks directly visible, even if I share my whole screen. Bookmark management for the win. I do when i share but i don't think there's anything that i'm like embarrassed by on there like it's it's like it's like google music pokemon reddit minecraft reddit and like dumb shit like that <laughs> um like all my pri like i actually the things that i don't want people to see those are in the bookmark manager shutting down the main pc and going for the tablet so that i can lay down geo this isn't that kind of show <laughs> Alternative cosmology equals horseshit. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, during the recap in episode five, uh, I left sort of a watermelon-sized curveball that was hanging out there, and no one's really discussed it. I'm sure people are busy. Oh, a curveball. A watermelon-sized hanging curveball. Um, I, I, I shouldn't be... Um, so pedantic about this but i think i I'd, i'll talk about this in a second because because I did, there's there's comments i want to read um uh r d is adorable thank you <laughs> this week in hermitcraft prank wars oh i haven't watched hermitcraft in forever I, I should get back into hermitcraft they're pretty cool guys um in any case in my case um all you see is the zero broke my folders i use for category titles good on you good on you uh <laughs> it is that kind of show it's true um okay watermelon sized curveball so john has a, a very odd tendency to use uh what are they called uh what, what are, uh colloquialisms not colloquialisms um like what are this oh god what are those things called i i should know these things i'm a, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm an english idioms 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 he uses idioms that aren't idioms like he says things that sound like they should be idioms, but but you're like, what? Like, that doesn't... It's not an idiom that I've heard before, and it makes no goddamn sense. Um, this is one of them. Um, I left a watermelon-sized hanging curveball. So, I don't, like... Uh, uh, I, I don't know, like... So there's like you know low hanging fruit, which is which is one idiom, right? Like like something that's easy to 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 to, to get at. So it's you know it's easy to attack, like flat earthers, right? Low hanging fruit. It's it's not the uh, the most prestigious. You're not you're not you're not really punching up when you're making fun of flat earthers. Um, or you're really kind of punching down at that point, right? So there's that idiom, right? There's like the low hanging fruit idiom, and then there's like a curveball, which is uh like a question or something that's that's um that catches the the person off off guard right it's it's unexpected it's a curveball so he's taking these two idioms and 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 squish them together to come up with this new idiom which is which is a hanging curveball and a watermelon sized one at that because the size of the curveball like this is like I said. This is where they stop making sense. 
Because I don't know how the size of the curveball has anything, or the, the size of the b ball has anything to do with how low it's hanging or how 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 curvy it is. Like I, it is just it's just a mess. <laughs> hanging curveballs usually get knocked out of the park. I guess is that what it is? Uh, <laughs> is that what is that what it is? Uh, John only wished he had the skills to play baseball. <laughs> uh, we're seeing his fantasies manifest in his word choice. Oh goodness, <laughs> Did they drag on the floor. Oh, uh, I heard one from an anti-vaxxer once. Not the sharpest orange in the knife drawer. Sure, right? You know why not? Why not? <laughs> oh goodness. Mm. Okay. A hanging curveball is actually said to look as big as a beach ball to someone with the power to hit it over the fence, like me. All right. <laughs> Why not? And and I asked, I, th I think at, at some point it, it wanna, I, I was trying to figure out, I, there, there is a video where I sort of read through a little bit of Quantum Eraser's comments. Um, and I was really curious about, like, I don't know if these are old people idioms. I don't know. Old people in my audience are these old people idioms, or are they are they just are are they just like the ramblings of a madman? Like I'm I'm really curious. <laughs> Hashtag idiotums. <laughs> oh no, I love it. Idiotums, idiotums. Uh, well, well, well. I like it. I well, we might we might we might hashtag idiotums onto the show. <laughs> Oh goodness! All right, let's listen to a little bit more of this. And um, I wanted to see, I wanted to show this because I've never heard anyone talk about this in all my travels. But no one's brought it up. I find that pretty surprising, and you're going to see why here in a minute. So remember, we'll just do a little um, uh, uh, brief review of scientific hypotheses, the scientific method, scientific theory, it won't be, it, it, it'll be painless. And then we'll get into a subject that, I don't know uh, if anyone has any comment on, they could leave the comments below, but uh, below the video, but I'd be interested in what people have to say on this. So let's just, let's just go for it. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to read this because I don't want to wait for him to read it. Um, so we're going to go over the scientific, what a scientific hypothesis is. Uh, and what the scientific method is. Even old people want to find that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, ten idioms of logic. I like that one. <laughs> um, I, 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 I am. I am. I mean, I say that I'm old, but I realize that I'm not old. <laughs> but I am older than like most of you. Not gonna lie. I'm, this is a baby face, which is why I look like way younger than I am. I'm. I'm. I'm I'm not young. I'm going to go with that. I'm not young. <laughs> I'm definitely not old, but I'm not young. Okay. Uh, um, okay. So, so what is a scientific hypothesis? I can't actually read one of these words because it's so goddamn small. Uh, I'm much older. You, you might be. <laughs> uh, scientific hypothesis. Oh, I have, I, now I have to read, like, look. St sorry, camera. I just, I gotta, I gotta read this. Scientific hypothesis. A special kind of prediction I know. Why do you write like this, John? Like, why? Why? What does this accomplish to write like this? Uh, a special kind of prediction that forecasts how the independent variable will affect the dependent variable. Older than thirty-five? I'm not older than thirty-five. I'm um just just a hair shy of that. Uh, ooh, looks about thirty-two. You got it right on the money, my friend. Very good. Very good. Um, I did a. Uh, Oh, because because we're on my age and I don't want to talk about this. Um, so I took um, this last semester. I took a freshman level um, psychology course um, because I need to need to do college things, right? Uh, and unlike the first day, they did like a like we were talking about different ways to collect data. So one of the ways that we collect data in in sciencey things um, in psychology, one of the ways that we collect data is that you know surveys surveys are one way. Um, and so we did a survey of the class and so we, we had to come up with a survey and then graph it, you know, the sloppily on paper, just, you know, graph your, 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 um, your, your Y axis and your, your X axis and, you know, your independent variable and your, and your dependent variable and, you know, just, and you didn't have to present it, but you just had to do this, right? 
Um, and so, so one of the questions that, that people were asking, uh, and so we were trying to find a correlation. So I think I asked, like, I don't even remember. I, I think I asked, like, how much time you spent, like, the two questions that I ask is, like, how much time you spend sleeping versus, like, how much time you were at work or something. I don't remember, but it was like that. Somebody was asking, like, what, how many, um, how many hours you were working, like, at, at a job versus uh, what, um, what, what grade you were in or, you know, whatever college level you were in. Um already have a mass already have a, a ba so already have a bachelor's in so so i'm not really in a level of college but i had somebody come up to me and look me straight in the eye and be like hey are you a freshman to, to which i was flattered that somebody thinks i look like an 18 year old um but this is not <laughs> this is not the face of an 18 year old <laughs> um which i thought it was great oh goodness everyone's age <laughs> Oh, I, well, a lot of people are actually genuinely older than I am. I know that Mike, I know that micro isn't. Um, so that's a thing. <laughs> I qualify as a seasoned citizen. <laughs> um, okay, enough of it. You don't have to uh, rib me. I'm just the oldest here. I'm always the oldest on YouTube. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for hanging out, Judd. <laughs> uh, okay. Goodness gracious, all. Oh. I, I, I gotta I gotta look at the analytics of my channel. Maybe that's what I'll do in between uh, during the interlude and and find out what the what the analytics are about. I know it's mostly dudes, but I don't know what age my dudes are. All right. Um. So okay, independent variable, dependent variable. Um. I guess I guess we'll listen to him. To say so it. remember, like I said, a scientific hypothesis is a special kind of prediction that forecasts how the independent variable will affect the dependent variable. It's pretty cut and dry. And the scientific method is hypothesis driven. That's what the scientific method is. You don't have hypotheses. You don't have the scientific method. Okay, so uh, quantum variance's definition of the scientific method is hypothesis driven. One makes an educated guess to explain a cause and effect relationship. So one makes an it. Oh, I'm sorry, Google. I wasn't talking to you. No, yeah, that wasn't Google. That was that was the other one. It was Alexa. Alexa, why are you listening to me? It's weird. I start listening when you press the home button or you enable Alexa hands-free mode that say your designated wake word. For more information, they should view Amazon's privacy notice and visit the help section of the Alexa app. I didn't realize that Alexa could hear me and now she's talking to me and I'm weird. <laughs> I'm weirded out. Educated guess to explain a cause and effect relationship. The independent variable is the cause and the effect is the dependent variable. That's your prediction. And as it says here, a scientific hypothesis is based on cause and effect reasoning again. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to read that to Alexa. I like Alex. Robot overlord takeover has begun. That's okay. <laughs> One of my fans just told me how old she was. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love I love the surveys. <laughs> um, so uh, wouldn't tell people thought you were you were nineteen. That was you. You posted a picture on Twitter, though. I could see that. I could I could see you as a nineteen year old. I could see that. Um, I don't have robots in my house for this reason. I love the robots in my house. I have so many robots in my house and i think they are all great i want more robots in my house i am annoyed at how few robots there are in my house i have i have the 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 i have obviously the google which sits back there i have alexa alexa that's actually my um my wife's uh tablet not like it's, it's just it's a, or her kindle or whatever right um and then uh we actually have a a robot uh litter box for the cats so the robot does all the cleaning which i think is fantastic um and i want a roomba or a, a robot vacuum cleaner one of these days uh now rd needs vector in his house i need something i need other things i'm seven years older than my wife but everyone thinks she's older than me i'm not way older but i'm like five years older than my wife um which isn't like way older but it's 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 a, it was a bigger difference when we were both younger now it's kind of gotten less and less of a big deal but when we first started dating it was a, it was a little odd because i was way older than her <laughs> uh, 
I'm okay with robot overlords. Honestly, like I can't wait for robot cars. I can't wait for any of this robot. I, I think it's great. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna read that one, my girl. Uh, okay, <laughs> gotta move on with life. Uh, a hypothesis that does not merely state X and Y may be related, but explains why they are related. Okay, scientific hypothesis is based on a cause and effect relationship. A scientific hypothesis does not merely state uh, X and Y may be related, but explains uh, may be related, but explains why they are related. Okay. Um. So so eighteen. Oh my goodness, you're the you're the um, you're you're easily the youngest. Um. Um. So, so, so quantum theory said us this thing, which is a, a thing that a lot of a lot of um, uh, word salady people do. Not word salad. You know, it's, it's a lot. It's 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 a, it's a rhetorical tactic. Um, foot in the door. Foot in the door. I want to call it. That's a tactic. I could be wrong. Um, where he makes a lot of claims that are not disagreeable. So. I, I, I'm not going to really disagree with, with his claims here, right? Um, I don't think he's necessarily wrong. Um, I think he's... Um, not pedantic. Semantically, he takes him, he takes him far too, like, literal. Like, he picks, he picks this one definition of science, and it's this one definition of science that trumps all other definitions of science. Uh, even if you show him, like, a different definition of science that says not necessarily a contradictory... Uh, definition of science, but one that expands on the first one, so it, it, it broadens the horizon of what science is, he'll still deny that the second definition is true because it disagrees with him. So he'll only stick with the one definition that agrees with him in all other definitions, regardless of the source, regardless of, you know, what university, what what professor, what uh, what um, uh, doctor, what whatever um uses that definition he doesn't care if it disagrees with him so he's doing that now where he's he's got a bunch of definitions here that i genuinely don't have any problem with like he's not wrong um he's just he's he's gonna be very narrow-minded <laughs> about it oh my girl oh that was on donation that wasn't on super chat i didn't see it over here um so that doesn't come with a message i and i can't read it i'm gonna try to read it um Oh look! Oh, oh look, Mister! I, I guess I'll read. I know what you're talking about, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to see it over here now. God damn it, my girl! <laughs> oh look at you, Mister! I fuck young chicks. That's. <sighs> uh, does work? Super chat does work or doesn't work? I'm pretty sure you mean you mean doesn't work. Uh, high school girls. He gets older. They they say the same age. Oh goodness. <laughs> mm. So what's the point? Quantum eraser, quantum eraser will eventually get to the point, I am fairly certain. Um So we'll get there. Uh I just got your full name by paying using PayPal. Did you really? Ah, ah. Hmm. Might have to fix that. Not that I care too much, but I might have to fix that. <laughs> okay, we'll fix it. Um okay. So it's dealing with explanations here. That's very important. There's a very important distinction between a description and an explanation. So, so this is this is interesting, right? Um, and this is what I mean about about quantum erasing eraser taking a definition far too literally. So he found he found this one, and he's got a, a to give him credit what some amount of credit is due, right? He's got an actual uh, citation of of where he found this. So he found somebody saying that. Um, uh, X explains why they are related, right? Or sorry, uh, like a, 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 a hypothesis. Science explains why two things are related and not describes how two things are related. And he is going to assume that it always has to explain why, which makes, this is the part where it starts making no goddamn sense, right? Um, because laws explain or sort of describe things, right? So, for example, um, Newton's first law, uh, object motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by a, by an outside force or a, another force. I forget exactly the wording of it. Um, that doesn't explain why, right? Like, there, there is no why in that law about why an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon. It's a description of what happens, a description of if you, if you throw a thing and nothing is in the way of that thing, it will keep going on forever. 
Um, uh, law is what theories is the how, uh, which is, yes. Um, is, is he talking about theory? The thing is, he's not talking about, he's talking about scientific, he's talking about science in general. Um, and so, uh, all right, we'll get to it, <laughs> but we'll get to it. Okay. Law is the what, and you're right. Law is the what, theories are the hows. Um, but that doesn't make, I guess my point is that doesn't make laws aren't invalid because they explains the, the, um, the what's any, like, it isn't less scientific to explain the what's than it is to explain the house, which is kind of what he's getting at. So a scientific theory represents a, a hypothesis or group of related hypotheses, which has been confirmed to repeated experimental tests for the 878th time during our episodes. But repetition is good. It's, it's important. And you can't have an actual scientific theory without it already being validated or confirmed by experiment. Okay. So, a scientific theory represents a hypothesis or a group of related hypotheses which have been preferred through repeated experimental testing. Um, that's fine. Again, like, a lot of this stuff isn't going to get... We're not going to get to the stupid for a little bit because he's doing that thing where... I'm not going to disagree with him. I'm like, he's, he's not wrong, right? It's his application of these definitions that's wrong. It's not the actual definitions that are wrong. Another word for an experiment is a hypothesis test. And you can't have math or equations for a scientific theory. It's tantamount to having married a bachelor. You can't have math equations for a flippin' scientific theory. It's tantamount to having a married bachelor. So... Um, so mathematical theories are not, you can't have mathematical theories according to quantum theory. So those, those can't exist, um, definitionally they can't exist, um, because you can't, I, I guess you can't, I don't know why they can't actually, I don't, I don't know why he thinks they can't exist besides the fact that he says they can't exist. So According to, to quantum eraser, you can't have mathematical um, scientific theories. Um. Why? Because mathematics at best merely describes. Never mind, he does explain why. <laughs> because it describes. Uh, uh, no, you can make experiments without a strict hypothesis. Um, um, so F equals MA isn't science. No. Um... Because it merely, and, and again, this is this is the thing about like the difference between laws and theories that uh, Jared pointed out. Jared pointed out between laws and theories, right? We have laws, and they describe the how, like the, again, the f equals m a is the the um, um, an object motion remain in motion, the the uh, laws of thermodynamics. You have all these laws, right? Um, you have the have the hows or. Uh, sorry, not the hows. You have the what's. You have the what's. Like, this is what happens in X situation, right? Um, but they're not scientific. Be Again, I, and this is the problem with, 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 with Quantum Eraser is he so narrowly defines things so that, so that he can pick and choose what is science and what isn't science. Um, mass has theorems, not theories. Uh, and I don't know what he's, like... So, so, so there's, you know, there's math and then there's science and there's definitely a point where, you know, in a, in a Venn diagram, they, 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 they come together. Right. Um, where you can have things that are purely math, like purely mathematical theorems that, um, you don't test, you don't test in the same way that you do a scientific experiment. Right. You don't, um, you can't, you can't test in the real world, the derivation of, 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 of equations. Right. Uh, or theorems. You can't do it in the same way that you can test, you know, that you can test things in the way that we usually think of science. Like, we usually think of science as, like, um, uh, what happens if I take this one, you know, this copper penny and I stick it in lemon juice. And this is, like, basic stuff that elementary, kids get, elementary school kids do, right? I take this penny and I stick it in lemon juice for 10 days. What happens? That's what we think of of science, and I think that's what quantum eraser thinks of of science. So we can't test mathematical theorems in, this, in that way. And for him, that's what makes them not science. Yeah. 
uh, what does the moron think E equals MC is? He actually, I, and I think he disagrees a lot with, with, with Einstein. So I don't think he, I think he would tell you that it's not science. I, I genuinely think that he would tell you it's not science. Um, it's also really funny because he's a big fan of um, quantum mechanics, obviously by his name, um, which is a lot of math. <laughs> um, and like, like so, so a lot of quantum mechanics, like, like don't get me wrong, quantum mechanics has has been incredibly successful and has made a crap ton of predictions that have worked out. Like it's it's very solid, right? But a lot of it is is math. Like a lot of it is just like. It's it's math stuff, but he's a fan of it. It's he, he's super weird. <laughs> he is a fan of quantum woo. He's not. I don't think he's a fan of actual like quantum science, right? Quantum mechanics of any any sort. Um, a fact, math and crochet, and it describes perfectly the important uh, part of the bloody theory of relativity. I think art, but always confuse the two. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna take a pause here because I need to my, my beer is almost done so I'm gonna get a refill and I'm gonna just 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 the tiniest of breaks, um, while I go get my beer refilled. Um, you all have yourselves a good time. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna before before I even start that I'm gonna go and do this because, um, like I said earlier, I did get a really cool bit of fan art from um, one of my patrons, uh, Luke Filewalker. So where did that go? Is it over here? It's right there so i did get a really cool bit of fan art so i'm gonna try to stick that in the fan art folder if i can find it there we go um and hopefully um while i am gone it will it will show up so thank you. um I'll, I'll be right back you all um enjoy the chat and we'll be we'll, we'll we'll keep talking about quantum eraser here in a little bit
All right, everyone, and we're back. And I don't, don't know if that piece of art actually made its way through during that. So I'm going to try to show it off because I think it was it was fantastic. So hopefully we'll get this. Uh, will we get it up? Ah, 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 I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have said that sentence. That was a terrible sentence to say. Um, <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Where to go? Oh, good. Now I have to find it. There it is. All right. Um, so this is a, a little bit of fan art that um, Luke Filewalker did, and I think it's fantastic. So I want to make sure that I share it with all the peeps. Uh, let's see. Nope, nope, nope. Where to go? Where to go? There it is. Bam. Um, for for all of you who don't know about pizza, since we we're talking about pizza, there we go. Most of your sentences are, most of my sentences I shouldn't say. I should never say, like, 90% of the things that I say. It's, I word badly. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I am, I am terrible at talking. Um, I've got, I think I've gotten better at talking since I've been doing this show, which, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it's just that I'm more confident in my talking, not that I'm actually better at it. I just, just more willing to say it. <laughs> um, but that's, that's been a fun change. <laughs> mm. um, next is the, you'll need a deep dish with, which isn't pizza, but tomato soup with bread, f with a bread hole in a bread hole. Ugh. Ugh. I did have once, um... I went to Chicago uh, a few years ago. I went to this pizza place, and I had um, no pineapple because that's disgusting. Um, but there was, like, shrimp artichokes. I want to say it was, like, shrimp and artichokes. Um, it was, like, it was a very fishy pizza, um, which, I, which I had never tried. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so I do always love, like, weird-ass pizza things. Uh, you mentioned the bike before. My Monster 620 came home last night. Nice. So, it's really nice here, and and by really nice I mean it's like forty degrees, which which is really nice for Omaha. Um, and I really want to ride my bike to work. Um, I haven't been able to for the last like two weeks because I've been um I've been going into work at like seven in the morning, which is a disgusting time to be up. Um, and then um, but it's really nice out, and I've been wanting to ride my bike, but I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to for a while. So I might have to take the battery out of my bike soonish so that it doesn't die over the winter. Um, also, the way the way that my um, the way that my job works, uh, which is really weird, but it's whatever. It's whatever. I can't really do much about it. Um, they charge you for parking. Like my job owns the parking lots, and my job charged me to park there. Which I, it's it's a bit weird, but it's better than walking like five blocks to get to work. So I just whatever, just pay for it. Um, and and one of the things that they do, they'll let me have um, they'll let me have uh, my bike and my car on the same like permit on the same parking permit, but without without like paying an extra fee, like having to pay for a second car or whatever. Uh, but they only let me have it for a certain amount of months. So it expired on December 1st, I think. So I so if I want to ride my bike to work and not get ticketed for being at the parking lot, I have to actually, like, um, call them up and have them extend that or whatever. But I don't, I'm not sure if that's, if I'll do that. I might just after winter or after I get back. But we'll see. Uh, Pixar Pizza. Pixar Pizza is great. Um. Is it a motorbike or a bicycle? It's a motorbike. Uh, it's a motorcycle. So uh, that's what I, I wish I could ride a bicycle to work, but it's one too far and two pedestrian or pedestrians and bicycles are just non-existent in Omaha. So most drivers don't know what to do with it, which means I probably got run over, probably would get run over and that, that would be no fun. So, so we don't, so I don't do that. Okay. Moving on with more of this wonderful presentation. Whereas real scientific theories, they explain the how and the why. In fact, there's two tenets that I would say in every scientific theory. Okay, so I guess he is going to go into the into the two um, the differences that we talked about earlier between the law and a the theory. So, again, 
nothing, nothing, nothing that you're saying is wrong yet. We'll, we'll get to the wrong part here, hopefully soon, because, because I want to get to the wrong parts. But so far, I'm probably not going to disagree with most of the scientific theories, explain the how, scientific laws, explains the what. That's fine. You're always going to get an explanation on the how and the why. That's the mechanism or the process. And it identifies the cause. That's very important. Like germ theory. Scientific theories are the result of validated, confirmed scientific hypotheses that have been rigorously tested. So when it comes to germ theory, germ, germ theory I find interesting. Um, uh, I, th I think we, I, I don't know if it was germ theory. There was something that I, that I brought up um, the last time that I made a video about quantum eraser. Which is one of, one of his big things is um, that in order to make an, obs an observation... Um, uh, has to, like, an observation has to be, like, instantaneous is, like, the best way to put it, right? So, so if you take, um, sodium and you stick it in water, um, and you, you, you see it blow up or whatever, you, 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 you sort of instantaneously see the, the explosion, right? Like, it's not, it doesn't take time for you to see the change. Um, so and he's got a problem with with seeing change over time like change over time for him is not an observation so one of the things that i brought up is things like um uh um who was it mendelson no not mendelson mendelson did peas um good who did the whoever did the 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 the, the meat covered with with cheesecloth experiment where he put like one piece of meat with cheesecloth on top of it, one piece of meat with an open, open to the air. Um, and then over time, you got to see that one cheesecloth developed, or sorry, the, the, the one, the meat without the cheesecloth developed maggots, and the one without, the one without the cheesecloth developed maggots, the one with the cheesecloth didn't develop maggots because the flies couldn't get to it. Um, that that wouldn't fall under the definition of some, uh, like, of make, being able to make an observation because it's something that takes time, according to... Uh, quantum erasers opinion so Pasteur I don't think it was Pasteur maybe it was Pasteur Pasteur did the bottle the soup broth like I know Pasteur did the soup broth thing right with uh it was soup broth and then that got I know that was one and it might be very similar but we'll, we'll keep we'll keep going like we just went out now I want to juxtapose that with scientific laws they describe the what or the is. The cause is not applicable. They are based solely on observations. Often expressed mathematically, you know, like, uh, for example, the second law of thermodynamics. You see, with scientific laws, the cause and the how and the why, the mechanism, are both nonsensical and they're invalid inquiries. You can't okay, I'm sorry. I kind of missed that because I wasn't listening. Um, the higher what does not heat flow f oh how why does heat flow from hot to cold always and we'll never know all we know is every single time it just does and is ergo scientific laws what do you mean we won't know don't we know I feel like we know why we know why 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 things go from being Uh, Mendel did the peas. Yes, Mendel did the peas. Ready? Maybe. Uh, as a child, I felt uh, the first discovered disease when I met my first conservative photo. Oh, no. uh, Francis, Francesco, ready. Yes, ready. Ready did it. Yes, that's it. That's the guy. Good job. Good job, chat. You get a, you get a free internet points for that. Um, something about moving atoms. That's just, but that's just me. I feel like we know why why the hot why heat moves to cold things um gold star you want a gold star you can have a gold star i don't have gold stars <laughs> if i had some on my desk i i would <laughs> but way to way to go way to go um just makes it sound so dramatic not flexible dogmatic not flexible. that that is the thing like it, it it is very dogmatic um like i said he picks a definition this one definition needs to fit all of what he says um and he, he gives no room for flexibility um 
Yes, but he doesn't know, so no one knows. <laughs> you got a gold googling plaque. Ooh, I like that one. Um, so, uh, the biogenesis member was Pestro with the open in uh, snake bottles. Yes, that was that was also that was also a cool experiment. Um, uh, Pasteur did that one, and I guess Reddy did the other one. Um, Francesco Reddy did the uh, the other biogenesis one. I think, right, right. The, the... No, it was. It's not called biogenesis. It's called something else. Is it called biogenesis? Huh. Um. Um. This isn't even English. It's not English. Uh, okay. So, um, I guess according to uh, Quantum Eraser, we will never w know why heat travels to cold things. We'll never know. We just we just won't because we just know that it happens and it's a law. But there is there is no no scientific theory to explain it to us because why not? Spontaneous generation. Thank you. It was spontaneous generation. That's the word I was looking for. Spontaneous generation is the, is is what was. Um, in case you don't know, and I have to explain this experiment. Spontaneous generation is what. Um, what used to happen, or what 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 scientists and I shouldn't quote scientists. They were scientists. They just didn't know any better. What scientists thought would happen, like that's what, like maggots didn't reproduce. Um, they just spontaneously generated from raw meat. Um, so, um, Reddy then made that experiment where he like I think I think the the way that it was thought of is like if air, if if air hits raw meat, it, 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 it spontaneously generates maggots, which spontaneously generates whatever, um, um, or, it, you know, eventually comes up with flies and whatnot. And that's how they came up with, I think, um, there's that one salamander that likes to hide in logs, um, that Charmander is based off of. This is the only reason that I know this. There's this one salamander that, that like hides in logs, uh, for warmth and stuff. And then like when you light it on fire, they come out. So, um, for a long time, it was thought that they were born from fiery logs, but that wasn't really the case. They just kind of liked the heat. Um, I know Charmander, the Pokemon's based off of that's, that's where my knowledge of fucking science comes from. Um, but yeah, so, so he did an experiment where he exposed part of raw meat to air with a cheesecloth on it. So it was still exposed to air, but wasn't actually exposed to like flies being able to drop off their eggs and one that was open to air and flies. And so he, um, from that experiment, we discovered that it wasn't the exposure of the air that caused um, uh, maggots to form. It was something else, which turned out to be other flies. Uh, so that's where the myth of the fire-loving salamander comes from. Yeah, I think so. Uh, also, really, if you're talking about germ theory, he should mention Robert Koch. Um, don't know that name. Uh, you need far more cold stuff getting even colder than the heat something. It's true. Uh, so which is harder, the... Uh, <laughs> Not going to read that one. <laughs> Heat moves to cold place because they have kinetic. That's how the way kinetics works. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, you can't get there. It's just an is and an are. For example, why does heat flow from hot to cold always? Well, we don't know. And we'll never know. All we know every single time, it just does and is. Ergo, scientific law. That's why they're called the laws of thermodynamics and not the theories of thermodynamics. Uh, we do know. I think we do know. I, and and I, I, I don't know. But I'd be surprised if we didn't know. Um, I get the feeling that we know in a way that Quantum Eraser isn't happy about. Um, Geo, I feel like, is going to about to sit here and explain things to us. P please go ahead, because I, it's not like I'm not going to pretend to know that. Uh, the mo molecules bumping into each other, uh, thereby transferring kinetic energy. I figured it had something to do with kinetic energy. Is he blushing? My work here is done. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. <laughs> uh, high energy things bounce and hit things that make less energy, making one speed up. And you know, that's what I figured. It's it's it's. I want to I want to say it's like the the the. I wish I, I I need more props in my life. Um, um, uh, it's it's things bumping into each other, which I'm cool with. Um, and I'm not an expert at this, so I'm not gonna com comment more than the than reading the chat. But I get the feeling that we do know. Um, and there's probably a scientific theory as to why this happens. Um, quantum eraser. I don't know what that science. If somebody can find it, that'd be great. And then we can share it with quantum eraser of how we do know and why we know. Um, this happens. 
Scientific laws never become scientific theories or vice versa. Each are domain specific inherently. So, having gone through all that, what should have been everyone's next objection? So we'll get to the next objection in a second. Cope got the Nobel Prize for medicine for his research on TB and basically the father of modern truth theory. Oh, that's cool. Laws are part of theories, though. Um, I would, yeah. I mean, again, I'm, it's, I'm having a hard time disagreeing with him because he's not really wrong. It's, it's like the law does, like, they don't upgrade like you don't you don't digivolve or whatever uh you know Newton's first law doesn't digivolve into into special relativity or whatever right it doesn't do that uh it's not noke it's coke coke did I not did I say noke oh it's noke coke um <laughs> um coke 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 um he also had magnificent facial hair i mean that's the important part right uh, Raven's Paradox, R&D, Curious is mired in it. <laughs> um, like, theories are how works laws just kind of describe the mass of the theory. Uh, he started the of translating, um, of trans, trans, I can't read that one. <laughs> Le learning stuff into freely applied knowledge. I, th I, th I think I, translating learn stuff into applied stuff yes i think i think you're right <laughs> so no i mean you're, you're right they don't like again, again quantum erics you're not wrong laws don't digivolve into theories they are part of theories they're they are a subset you know they, they make up you you can't you can't have a theory without laws beneath it to 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 hold it up or their challenge or their inquiry I hope nobody can see that through there. I can see it a little bit. So, is anyone saying, are you watching the chat, Texas? So, so, dear chat, what do you think the question you should be asking is? I, I, I wish I had the Price is Right theme song to, to play here, but what do, you, what do you think? What do you think we should be asking? Um, I'll give you all a, a second before the, the, the great reveal. The quantum eraser will have for us here um, depends on the field biology. Uh, the few laws we have aren't math based. Uh, <laughs> I suppose in the math based part, yeah. I don't think in psychology we have a lot of math based laws either. <laughs> <coughs> oh goodness, I'm gonna die here. Like trying to do the show. Um. Um. Of course, there would be a theory of thermodynamics and let, let random laws run free and unexplained. There's always a body of hypothesis, and with enough time, some of them will graduate to theories. Why well, can't uh, R&D pronounce Coke? What's wrong? I Coke. You said Coke, right? Like Coke. Like the thing that, that people snort, right? Coke. Coca-Cola Coke, right? Science has never used the term theory and law consistently. Um, not sure about that one. Uh, my question, why do you not understand <laughs> quantum eraser? That science doesn't care about your opinion. It really doesn't. It's not Coke? Then what is it? If it's not Coke, it's spelled like Coke. That's not a me problem. That's a German problem, apparently. No, not Coke. What is it then? <laughs> it's not Coke. It's the same as Boke? Bouge? Pepsi? Cook? Is it cook? Like, like, is it is it a long O? Cook? Like, like he's cookie? Cook? Or like, or like cookie? Uh, like, it's a tasty thing. Cookie? Is that where we are? Close to things as a shh. It's a shh. It's a kosh. Is it kosh? Because that makes no goddamn sense. Because, because you don't smell like kosh, <laughs> like kosher salt. Say, <laughs> say cock with a German accent. Um, I'm not sure. Kosher? Is it like kosher? Like kosher salt? Um, it's a short O, but it's not K sound at the end. It's a sh. Kosh. Like kosher. Um, it's just a 30. Like kosher? Like kosh. Is it? Am I? Am, am I? Is it kosh? Kosh. Am I probably getting too much? No? Okay. <laughs> No sh, coke, coke, coke. I can't. 
It feels wrong. That feels very wrong in the throat. <laughs> Lock. Cock. Cock. Is it cock? That feels... That... Okay. That feels terrible. I don't want to ever say that word again. <laughs> that feels wrong. That word feels disgusting to say. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That word is killing me! Ah. Ah. Cock. Ah, it's terrible. Oh, godness. Oh, godness. I, g I give up. Nope. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, is anyone saying anything? Uh, what, what have been, what's the next objection? Oh, it was not very active. Currently. But go okay. on. Okay. Okay. This should have been the next objection. What makes the laws of physics scientific, right? Why? Why? Okay. So now, now I'm confused, Quantum Eraser. I thought, okay. Do you not like laws? Now I'm very confused. Why would that be the next? Now, no. What? Okay, I'm trying to, mm. so you're not okay with laws. Laws are, so, okay, at first, I thought your whole objection was science, um, it's only science if it describes the why. And then people in the chat, <clears throat> People in the chat pointed, rightfully pointed out that laws describe the what's, and so did you, and theories describe the how's or the why's, right? And so, for a second there, I thought, okay, he doesn't actually have problems with scientific laws. Laws are, are fine, they're just not theories, which is a... I don't know why you're complaining about that, because we don't disagree. Um, but now it seems like you do actually have a problem with laws. Like, laws aren't scientific because they don't explain why. They only describe what. Okay. Is that is that where we're at? What makes the law scientific? They're observable, repeatable, and predictable? I don't know. I don't, I don't, like, I, I am now genuinely confused by this. Um, and I don't want to rewatch it to find out where I went wrong. So we're just going to keep watching. That's a really good question. It's a question I asked myself uh, not that long ago. Well, what what makes it scientific? Because I, I, I really don't know. So. so <coughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> Sorry, as yes, I die. Um. Goodness, I'm gonna have to keep my uh, my my finger on the on the mute button. <sighs> okay, okay, I read ahead. I cheated, and read ahead. Scientific laws, laws of physics, for example, are not scientific. This is not what I expected today. <clears throat> they are merely descriptions, often expressed mathematically, of plain old observable nature. Observations of nature. The scientific method is employed to elucidate and explain cause and effect as the why's and how, not describe what's is. So they're not science. Okay. This is what I came up came up with. Scientific laws, that is, the laws of physics, are not scientific. So I know people are just going to start jumping off bridges, you know, taking their medication. The cognitive dissonance is going to start rolling the rooster. I you know people are just going to start jumping off bridges, you know, taking their medication. The cognitive dissonance is going to start rolling the rooster. I you're going to say, oh, he's crazy now. He's going off the reservation. But I mean, I mean, yes. Not, 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 not gonna, not gonna lie there. 
What the fuck is rambling about? Um, I think I think I think he thinks far greater of himself when he's he said something so controversial that people might off themselves. I don't know. But just hear me. We, we do think you're off the reservation. I do agree with Sean on that one. For a second. Scientific laws are merely descriptions. They're often expressed mathematically of plain old observations of nature. I don't... So, so I mean, I don't disagree with you entirely, but I do disagree with you on how belittling your language is about laws. Scientific laws. Um, like, merely... A description is, um, like, I mean, you're not wrong, but, but it's not like, it's not just a description, right? Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's not like saying that chair is red. It's, it's a description that, pre that, that can predict outcomes, um, so again, an object of motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by a by an outside force. Um, makes a prediction about the future and can be tested. So I don't, I don't, I think that's where you're wrong. <clears throat> sure, under scientific laws, they are scientific when they are not. Yeah. Ah. Uh... See, the scientific method is employed to elucidate and explain cause and effect. The hows and the whys, not describe the what's and the is's. Scientific <clears throat> laws only breach the first step of the scientific method. That's my proof. No, no, no. And now, now we're getting into the, the absolutely dumb, dumb thing that we said. Um, <clears throat> again, things like force equals mass times acceleration is part of a law, right? But, and it's mathematical, which I know you already think isn't scientific, but, but, that doesn't mean it doesn't, like, it stops there. Like, somebody saw something and just, just, just stopped doing, like, <clears throat> you can make predictions using scientific laws. You, you, you can make, you know, if you have an object of whatever so much mass and you accelerate it so much you will get so much force out of it yet you, you, you can make a prediction and you can test it which already contradicts this idea that that it's that that it only that it isn't scientific and it only it only makes an observation like no it, it makes a prediction um and you can you can come up with a hypothesis and you can you can test it so you're, 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 you're not, now is when we're starting to do the, you're very wrong. This fool doesn't understand science. He doesn't understand anything. <clears throat> A little already exaggerated QE's levels of expertise. He's knowledge of measured in nano, uh, in the nano scale. Right, all right. Um, wait for drinking. Uh, are you drinking beer first round? No, I'm drinking water because I talk a lot during the show and then I die of coughing. So I have to drink some water. <clears throat> I have it. My, my beer is over here. I'll, I'll I'll keep working on it. Don't worry. Beer is not gonna go to waste. It's just you know we gotta we gotta. Uh, uh, leave signs out of what a Q and D does not understand. He just doesn't understand. It's true. Uh, goodness. Hey Charlie, Charlie, you you've had some fun interactions with Mister Quantum Eraser. Uh, I remember the great interactions you've had with Quantum Eraser. Oh goodness. Um, Quantum Racer really knows nothing about signs or how it's done. Just the documents, just his documents look more like ravings of a kidnapper than irrational individual. It's very true. Um, and yeah, you, you, you've had some fun interactions with him. He's an interesting character. So, all right, here we go. It's over right there. <clears throat> this. Observe a phenomenon. You can't formulate a hypothesis, a scientific hypothesis. You just can't do it. So... Why not? Why can't I form? I have a mass that's five kilograms. I accelerated at thirteen meters per second squared. Actually, let's let's do nine point eight because that's gravity, right? Let's do nine point eight, right? How much force will it hit with? 
We'll, 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 we can. We, we, we genuinely can make a hypothesis. We can take an educated guess and we can test it. You just... Hashtag hand fapping today. Ah. Oh. Oh, yes, I had. He still seems to think that photons are only produced by transitions between orbitals and atoms. He ignored radio frequency photons to make uh, them all. We make them all the time. He's He doesn't know what he's talking about. In general, I love to see QE write something by hand. I... <laughs> Uh, what were the laws of motion? Newton derived them, um, definitely from observed, observed phenomena. I mean, he did, right? Uh, uh, G is 9.81 or 10. I, I like 9.81. 9.81 is, is a good, uh, hey, and, and all, and all you, you, uh, barbarians out there, I use your, your measuring scale just for funsies. Um, <laughs> Uh, the scientifically a really half baked potato levels of are the chart today. Nice. Yes. It's, it's just insanity today. It's out of context. <clears throat> you can't formulate, uh, like I said, a scientific hypothesis step three because a viable cause or independent variable doesn't exist. Forever illusory. For why? Again, why? I take a fair fight again. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to this F equals MA. Don't be envious of people that live on the <laughs> live in the civilized world. <laughs> Barbarian, Vulvarians in the case of Geo. Um, again, five kilograms. If I shoot, if if I have a five kilogram ball and I accelerate it, at, you know, two point meters per second, uh, or whatever, you know, two point meters. <laughs> that was a sentence. Um, you know, uh, two meters per second. Versus one that I that I accelerate at four meters per second versus one at nine meters per second, whatever. Um, I can change that independent variable. I, I, I can change the acceleration. That's my independent variable. My d, d I, I need to use other hands. Um, my dependent variable, the force, will give me different outcomes. This th this lines up with with your idea of of what science should be. I I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. Hey, Redditors, what's the scouter say about the stupid level? It's over 9,000. It is. I just, oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> um, you realize that calling uh, Franconian and Vavarian is like calling Kiwi an Aussie. It leads to slow and painful death. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Let's do an experiment on quantum tunneling using Eraser's head. <laughs> if we just keep trying. Ah, uh, what did we miss? We missed more quantum eraser. <clears throat> Don't need an independent relative measure or something. You can put, um, you can't, but you don't always need it. Does QE need an independent variable every time he gets on a scale to weigh himself? I don't, I, his, so, he's just got a very, very, um, dogmatic definition of what an independent variable is. I, like, like, I, I genuinely don't. I don't necessarily have too much of a problem about having independent variables and everything. I think his his one caveat for what an independent variable is tends to be it must be something that you can manipulate. So he'll <clears throat> he'll throw away things like time. Like time isn't an independent variable because you can't manipulate it. Of course, you you <clears throat> if you're not super dogmatic about about it, you can manipulate time. You you can wait. Right, you can wait, or you can you can stop an experiment in a certain amount of time, so you can manipulate time in that way. But in in his in his dogmatic view, you can't, which is what he does. That he's God, he's just an idiot. Okay. Forever. So let's take a look at this. You got we got Max Tegmark. He's the uh, he's a professor of physics at MIT. Let's see what he has to say about this. We humans have gradually discovered many additional recurring shapes and patterns in nature involving not only motion and gravity, yeah, right, but also areas as disparate as electricity, magnetism, light, heat, chemistry, radioactivity, some atomic particle. These patterns are summarized by what, by what we call our laws of physics. Um... <clears throat> Okay, I'm not, you gotta, I, I'm sure you'll explain it, but all I gotta say is, okay, 
slightly poetic, which is fine. Nothing wrong with scientists being slightly poetic. By the way, look up the definition of green ink uh, letter in Rational Wiki. Oh, I will. Thank you. Uh, um, on the hard work of uh, Quart Mines has made his hands soft and, <laughs> and his attitude hard, I know. He goes on to say, in the same article, when we look at reality through the equations of physics, we find that they describe patterns and regularities. That's all they do. Therefore, the laws of physics are mathematical, i.e. they're descriptions of mere observations of what? The laws of nature. That's all they are. So I'm, I'm <clears throat> maybe I'm being pedantic, probably. What are the laws of nature's? And I'm, and I'm going to also assume now that the laws of nature's aren't, aren't scientific. So they're describing a non-scientific thing by your definitions, because you've already told us that laws aren't scientific. So by your definition of word usage here, um, <clears throat> the laws of physics which aren't scientific or describing a non-scientific thing uh which okay is that is that where we're at is that where, where, where we're at um uh, okay describe the law of biogenesis using math i know that would actually be kind of describe a lot of laws uh basically quantum rays only access independent variables that can be experimented manipulated directly so opposed to manipulate as variations of a function pretty much so I think I think one of the things, and and I brought this up because um, in that in that one debate I had with him, and I'll, I'll try to find it. I I will try my best to find it. Um, one of the things that we brought up as we were debating him was how do you like uh, account for um, titles, tides, right? Um, because tides, you can you can experiment on tides, right? Like you you can. Uh, wait for the tides to go in, tides to come out, and all that nonsense, and and keep a track of where the moon is and the phase of the moon and all that 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 nonsense, right? Um, most of which really, you know, where the moon is, um, and you can keep track of all sorts of things to to determine how how the tides are working. Um, and he had no answer for that because you can and and tides, you know, you, we we can predict tides in, into the future quite a bit. We can predict when high tide is, when, when low tide is, and all that nonsense. Uh, without being able to manipulate either the moon, the distance between the moon and the Earth, without it being able to manipulate where the moon is in space, without being able to manipulate time, but we can still make these predictions. And he had absolutely no goddamn answer for how we could do this. It's quite amusing to see him sort of um, scramble on the fact that we have a predictive model that works, um, that can't predict things in the real world but don't use independent variables in the way that he wants independent variables to use when i use a word humpty dumpty said as in a rather scornful tone it means just what i choose it to mean neither more nor less the question is said alice whether you can make words mean so many different things the question is said humpty dumpty which is to be the master that's all <laughs> the tides go in and they come out um, you cannot do signs in stupid units, Sean. <laughs> uh, I toss a baseball at 90 miles per hour. I can predict the force it will impact using. Um, yeah. Thank you for, for changing the, the miles per hour. <laughs> um, yeah, no, again, laws make predictions. Laws fall well within the, the science things that you think is science, right? Like you can make predictions based on laws. I've been using F equals MA a lot because we can predict with what what amount of force something will hit if you throw it at a certain amount of acceleration uh, with a certain mass, um, or vice versa. You you throw the same you throw an object the same amount of acceleration, just change the mass. You can predict how much force, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would I would really really like for you to explain any of this. But wait a second. My son is a video game champion. He can readily recognize and describe the recurring patterns and regularities present in the game. All the while, being absolutely clueless about the underlying architecture or the software of the game. But he intuitively knows that the patterns and the regularities in the game 
are not the cause of the game. Uh, I don't know what to say. I, I, I generally don't know what to say. Uh, you don't need to know the cause to detect effects. Uh, I, but if he took the software because he would understand why. I mean, I, I, like, he's not wrong. It's, it's one, like, like, yeah, laws, but that, so, so just because you have, right, just because you have a law, and we're going to stick to the F equals MA, you, just because you have a law that can explain to you exactly what will happen if you, if you throw a ball at a certain, of a certain mass at a certain amount of speed, you will know exactly how much, how much force it, it exerts, right? Um, so, so you know that. And just because you don't know why that happens doesn't mean that that law isn't scientific. It still does all the scientific things that you, you, you claim to care about, Quantum Eraser. It's still, you can still make observations. You can still make predictions. You can still test the hypothesis. You can still do all of these things. So the only thing, the only reason that you're refusing to call them science isn't because it doesn't fit under the definition of science, but it's because of this random arbitrary definition that you'd instilled in, in, in science, which is that it must explain the the why. And that is that is not something that that everyone else has instilled. It's, it's something you you've done and you've and, and and I'm gonna point this out as as we end here. You've done this dog, dogmatically. You, the, the person who is making a whole presentation about how about science versus scientism has take has has taken this very rigorous definition of science and you are applying it dogmatically and you refuse to veer off of it and you are calling what you are doing science and what everyone else is doing which is to be you know understanding that that science is a little bit more more broad and variable than than what you think it is you're calling that scientism I, do you understand the problem there? That that you are you are the one that's actually being dogmatic about science, and not the people that you are calling dogmatic about science. It's it's entirely the complete opposite here. <sighs> Focus and effect is really quite correct, as you can spend years in physics just working on the implications of this sim <coughs> seemingly simple equation. It, it's yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, he only knows about how much analyzer players put into video games, how accurately they can predict and exploit the effects of the game software without ever having to look at the code. Um, yeah, no, right? Uh, Quantum Eraser. Uh, here, Quantum is trying to connect the virtual world and real world. That's why he's wrong. He can only his son only following the laws of the virtual world in of his game, and that's fine. Like. And I, I kind of like in, in, in a weird way, like I understand what he's trying to get at, how how understanding the, the mechanics of, of the virtual world or the, or the laws, right, doesn't necessarily give you knowledge about the, the, the bigger picture, right? Like, um, like I can, ex you, you know, a kid can explain to you the mechanics of a game and they, um, you know, the RNG behind it all and, and the likelihood of, of X happening versus Y happening and whatnots, right? And they can become experts at it and never understand how the game was programmed. But that doesn't make what they've done less valuable or scientific. Like, and that's, that's the difference here. Like, Quantum Eraser is really saying... That if you don't know the why, then whatever it is you're trying to explain is less scientific, it's less valuable, it doesn't matter as much. Which I think he's very wrong in. Um, it's still it's still scientific. Um, you can still make, you can still do the sciencey things, you can still make predictions, you can still make hypotheses, you can still do all that. So it's still scientific. Um, it's just that Quantum Eraser is going to be weird about it and say that it's not because reasons. All right, with that said, we're going to end things there for today. Um, oh, let's... Where's the thing? Where is where is the card? That's not the card. Damn it. Damn it. 
We'll just go there. I think this is how I don't even know how I'm in missions anymore. Um, thank you everyone for showing up today. I greatly appreciate it. Um, <laughs> we still don't know why gravity does this shit. It's true, we don't. That again, that doesn't mean we can't predict well gravity's gonna work. We can't that doesn't mean we can't send rockets into space and do all that, right? I, I'm sure quantum erasure would disagree with me on that, but that's how it works. Um, thank you everyone for joining me today. I always greatly appreciate your company. We have had a great time talking about Quantum Eraser. Um, kind of try to have a video today. Just, no promises. I'm being very lazy about this. Um, uh, we used the fire quite effectively for thousands of years without understanding the chemistry of why or how things burn. Still, we used fire. It's true. Um, which, again, I, I, I think... I, like, I think that's, in a way, I agree with his point about, about like, knowing, knowing how, knowing how to make fire doesn't, ex doesn't give you the answers as to why things burn. Like, being able to build a fire doesn't necessarily give you, this is how, this is why things burn, right? That's understandable, but that doesn't make the ability to make a fire any less valuable or any less scientific, um, to not have that higher level of understanding doesn't make the lower stuff less valuable, which is which is what he's trying to say. Okay, um, thank you everyone for joining me today. I've had a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, I will see you all next week. Yes, I will see you all next week, and that will be the last time for this season. We'll have a season finale. I don't know what that will entail. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided. But thank you everyone for joining me today. I will see you all next time.